Welcome! In this session I would like to explain to you how to use operators in PowerShell. Operators are used to see if a condition is met. Before I start I need to make sure that you have a full understanding of variables in PowerShell. If you are unsure or you would like to refresh your memory, please visit one of my earlier sessions. We can distinguish between two types of operators. The first one is the comparison operator. Uh, it compares two values with, with each other and either responds with a true or with a false value. Next up is the type operators. Um, they are used to see if a value contains a certain data type and will also respond with either a true or a false value. Comparison operators are used to see if a condition is met. If the condition is met, it will result with a true response. If the condition is not met, it will respond with a false result. The condition operators that we can use are the minus EQ, that stands for equal, the minus LT, that stands for less than, the minus GT, stands for greater than, the minus GE, stands for greater or equal to, the minus LE, stands for less or equal to, and the minus NE, stands for not equal to. Next up we have the like and the not like. Um, these are wildcard comparison operators. Um, a wildcard is specified with an asterisk. You can add the star on either side of the string or on both sides. If you add the um, star on the right side, it will mean that all the left characters from that star need to match um, the search. If you put it on the right hand side, it means that the um, that the search needs to end with the characters. And if you put it on either side, you are looking for an expression that could be part of the word that you are looking for. The match and not match can be seen as regular expression comparisons. They are similar to the like comparisons, except that you don't have to specify a wildcard. Um, the match you are looking for is stored in an automatic um, default variable that gets overwritten every, every time a match statement is called. Next up we have the contains and not contains operators or uh, comparison operators. They are more specific than the match operators. If you specify a contained operator, um, it's looking for an exact match um, in the operator. So if the word needs to match exactly to what you are looking for. Next up we have the in and not in. Um, the function is the same as the contain operator. Um, you can say it's just turned around, so it's an inverse. Since you need to specify what you're looking first and then after that you will seek what, what you're looking for. Up next we have the replace. It does exactly what it says. You can use it to repla uh, replace phrases or characters in a string of text. The type operators um, work with data types, for example with strings, with integers, with arrays, with objects and so on. The is and is not, you can compare for example a variable of a certain data type, like an object, a string, and so on. If you compare um, if a certain value is not of a certain data type, you would use the is not. Up next is the as. Um, you, you can display contents in a different data type, like converting an integer to a string or a string into a date and time. Um, by default, uh, PowerShell is not case sensitive. However, if you can force PowerShell to compare, uh, compare values based on case sensitivity um, by appending an I to the operator. Um, so if we add an I to the EQ, that will be case insensitive. And if we uh, append a C to that, that will force PowerShell to com compare values with case sensitivity. Okay, let's wrap this up with a couple of examples in PowerShell ISE. Okay, I've opened PowerShell ISE to demonstrate to you how to use 
the operators. The first one that we're going to use is the minus EQ. That stands for equal to. So I'm specifying 1 plus 2 equals to 3. And if I execute that, you can notice that the answer is 2. If the next one we're going to demonstrate is the minus NE, that stands for not equal to. So 2 does not equal to 3. That is true. Next up is less than. So 2 is less than 3. Results in true. Greater than, 100 is greater than 5, results in true. Now if we scroll down, I'll demonstrate the greater or equal to. So if I say 5 is greater or equal to 5, that should result in true. Same as 7 is greater or equal than 5. Both are greater or equal than 5. Less or equal to, so 1 is less or equal to 7, or 7 is less or equal to 7, if I execute that, both result in a true. Next up, I'm going to demonstrate the not equal to, so 6 is not equal to 7, that will result in a true. I've just written ex one example that actually results in false, just to show you that if a comparison is not met, then it will result in a false value. So if I say 7 does not equal to 7, it will tell me that it's not correct. Up next, we have the like operator. Um, you specify that with the wildcard. So the wildcard, I'm saying that the first four characters need to be test, and the rest is what could be whatever. So I'm looking for if test is part of testosterone, and that is true. Next up, we have the match operators. This is the vari variable that is stored, or the match statement is stored in. So if I execute a match statement, um, Sunday matches the word or the character's son, that is true. And if I execute the variable now, you will see that the variable has stored the son value in the match. Um, variable. Okay, next up I'm going to create an array list or an array object with two words. I'm going to create a Sunday and a Monday and I can just show you that this is an object that is part of an array. Okay, so if I look for the match in the array called Sun, it will return Sunday. Same way if I look for the match in day since both days have Sunday and Monday have the word or the characters day in them. If I execute that I will get returned both days that have been have the word day in it. Next up I'm going to use the not match uh, operator. I'm going to Sunday not match day. Of course Sunday has got day in it, that's why it results in a false value. Alright, for this example I'm just going to add two more variables, object variables, to our object days variable by doing that by that. I'm going to show you that what is in the object currently. We've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If I say give me everything that does not have sun in it, it will return Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay, up next I'm going to demonstrate the contains. This needs to be an exact match. So if I'm looking for a word, it needs to have an exact match to that word. For example, I'm going to create another object called object test. Just to show you again that it is an object, I'm going to call the get type operator or get type method with the name property. And if I see if that object contains the word test, it will return true because test is one of the strings that has been written into the object variable. All right, up next I'm going to look for in. This is actually the exact same thing as the contains, except that it's turned around. First of all, we'll specify what we're looking for, and then we specify what we're looking or where we're looking for it. So if I execute that, I'm just saying I'm looking for test. It should be in that object, and if, it, if it's part of it, it will return true. 
replace replace can replace um, string or string or text in another string so I'm going to call a string and then I'm going to replace the word get and replace it with the word stop so if I execute this and you can see instead of get process I have changed it to stop process okay next up is the is or type is not these are type operators first of all I'm going to create a string variable that is called test now I can check if this object is really a string so if I execute this I'll say pass the string variable and say is this really a string and you will see that it returns true the better way instead of choosing a string you can actually say or use the square brackets to say that this should be a type so this time I'm specifying is the object test is it really an object so if I execute this I will get the answer yes it really is an object now for the string if um, since I've created a string variable I'm going to ask to see if it is an array and if I execute this you will see that it results in true since it is a string value okay up next I will demonstrate the as um, this type operator this is a way to cast information into a different um, data type so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a string execute that just and then I'm going to ask to see if this is a date and time but since it is a string I will get the result false but with the as so the minus as I can actually cast this into a date and time so I'm going to tell my string that it should show this as a date and time and there you see since my um, computer set to German it will cast the string into a date and time another thing you can use the as for is to cast it to a different um, object variable or object so this time I'm going to take the number 1031 and I'm going to cast that to a system system globalization culture information and if I execute this you can see that the number 1031 is actually the language German in the culture information okay up next I would like to demonstrate case sensitivity first of all I've got upper uppercase test equals to lowercase test without any case sensitivity if I run that it will result in true the same if I append an I to the EQ it will also it will force it to search with case insensitivity and but if I start or if I append a C in front of the EQ and ask it is K uppercase test case sensitive equal to lowercase test this will result in false well I hope you've enjoyed the session and I'm looking forward to our next one